You're listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hayner. And this is Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hayner. Thanks for joining us as always. Tonight, our guest is Garrett Marks, DGM of the Fort Wayne Champs. Garrett, how are you doing tonight? Good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me on. Doing well, doing well. Okay, so let's get right into this. First of all, could you tell us a little bit about how you first got involved in TPT and kind of how it relates to the G League culture? Yeah, sure. So I worked for the Fort Wayne Mad Ants of the NBA G League from 2007 to 2017. So I started off there as just an account executive in 2007, you know, selling season tickets, group tickets, season, uh, sponsorships. And in 2015, I actually in 2014, I, I heard a little bit about the first ever TBT and I didn't really understand what it was. I didn't know if it was like a charity tournament, but I saw on some guys' social medias about it. And and then in 2015, I started to see more about it. And one of our play old Mad Ants players, Tori Jackson, was on the team that won it in 2014, along with a couple other players that played for the Mad Ants who were Notre Dame. The, it was the fighting alumni, the Notre Dame fighting alumni won it in 2014, the inaugural season TBT. So once I learned more about it, I go, wow, this is for real money. This isn't like we're donating money to charity or it's like, you know, we're actually getting some money. I was like, we could do this. We just won the G League championship, the Mad Ants in 2014. So I got like a core group of those guys. I think it was six of the championship team and then added some guys from former seasons. We made a run to the semifinals, the final four, you know, and then I was hooked. And basically that's how I got involved. I was, at the time I was the vice president of sales and marketing. So I had nothing to do with the basketball side of the Mad Ants really, besides maybe a few things helping out here and there. Um, but it was just a great experience. You know, you're, you're playing on, we were on ESPN, you just get hooked. And that's why I'm here now doing this still, honestly, trying to just get the monkey off the back mission, you know, accomplish the mission sort of thing. Yeah. So you guys have had one of the, the more interesting ter- uh, journey. So winning the G league title in 2014, going into 2015 as, uh, the champs, but uh, tell us a little bit about some of the other kind of highs and lows of TBT for the <laughs> champs. I know we've had the Ray John Rondo team yeah. Rondo year. We've had a fan vote year. So it is crazy how you are still sitting here today after all these ups and downs. It, it is the one I think about it that way, because even in, so 2016, the year after we made the semifinals, we got knocked out in the first game. We buy by your guys, the Canton Bulldogs. <laughs> Who, uh, on paper, I just don't... I mean, I think it's one of those things, if we had played it in a regular... We played it at 9 in the morning. It was just a weird deal. But then they were a good team. There were some good players on the team. But anyway, that was the first low point. I mean, that was a... You know, after all year sitting on that loss in the semifinal, seeing how close we were to a million to then get knocked out right away, that... I mean, that was tough pill to swallow. But, you know, we, we went along. 2017, we, we won a game, got knocked on the next game. 2018 is the Rajan Rondo year where... We had just missed getting in. That's when I needed the fan votes. We almost made it. We were short by like, I think it was like 20 or 30 votes. I had been doing everything possible to get, you know, I got like two or 300 votes the last day, the last few hours. And so we just missed it. And Dan Friel called me. I was super, I, I, I understood the situation. I was like, yeah, I was like, Dan, honestly, I feel like if we didn't get the votes, we shouldn't be in because I should have got a, done a better job. And my, I'm a vice president of sales and marketing for crying out loud. Like we should have got the votes. So he, then, like, I think it was, so I told the whole team, we're not in. Sorry, I did everything. You know, I could, we could, but we're not in. And then Dan calls me. I think it was like a few days later. And I knew as soon as I saw Dan Friel on my cell phone, I was like, I bet, I think we're going to get back in. And sure enough, Rashawn Rondo had said, you know, hey, I'm going to be busy. I'm not going to be able to be a part of this team that he was putting together. He wasn't going to play, obviously, but he was going to be there, coach or GM or whatever. And so when they found out he wasn't going to be there, like, well, okay, well, that's why your the team was in. So they took them out. We got in, and we made it to the Super 16. We won two games that year. It's made a nice, decent run. Got beat by uh, um, Jimmer Fredette's team, Team Fredette. Um, and then 2019, we made the Super 16 again. We actually got in on our own that way that year. No, no issues. 2020, we were supposed to be a – what was it called? Uh, for the alternate. COVID year. Alternate. So we were an alternate. And we we had he, we were had the guys were lined up. We've taken the COVID test. And then we I think we had three guys – test positive for COVID and, and we, they were going to let us come in with six or seven guys. And I was just, I asked the guys and there were just not enough guys were willing to do it. So I helped guys get on teams and within, so I kind of helped some teams out that year within the bubble. Um, but then in 2021, that's the year where we were one of the bubble teams in TBT's eyes and they had the fan vote, which charge was a part of, and they made us submit like a three to four minute video to, um, they got to watch these videos and the fans, the diehard TBT fans got to vote for a team in. And we were the team that was voted in. And I think Charge got a free pair of shoes. I think everyone that voted for us got a free pair of Pumas that year. Wouldn't you yeah, be yeah. prime time? 
And then we beat Prime if we won a game, and we did, and we beat Prime Time. And then we got that year we got beat by Sideline Cancer, and that was a tough year because we we won the beat Prime Time. We had two guys who were both clients of our agency, which I felt horrible about, got injured in that game, and and one wasn't very serious. One was a little bit more. He ended up still being able to play professionally that year, but I felt horrible last year um, because we won a game. We got in, so now that's I, I love the rule now that if you win a game, you get in because it really rewards the teams that put together good teams. And it doesn't matter if you're an alumni team or what. If you win a game, you deserve. You should be able to, you know, have another run at it if you want it. Um, and so I, I'm glad that it gives the teams like us. Otherwise, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be here probably. Honestly, like us, the teams like us and some others. So it kind of makes it a level playing field where hey, if you can win, you get to keep competing. Yeah, I always find it interesting the fan vote because it's funny. I actually and I bitch about it every time, so I'm gonna bitch about it again. I got the spam filter one, so I didn't sign up the one year. So I was on that list. I would have gotten the free shoes you would have uh, won me. And I'm still bitter about this. <laughs> TBT reinstate me. What the hell? Do we know? No. Are they doing? Are they doing that again? I'm just curious. Have we heard anything about a fan vote? Or we don't? So. We don't yeah, I, I don't yet. think so. We haven't gotten any emails yet because uh, okay. Ty, a guy who's a hardcore TBT guy in our fantasy TBT, he has not seen any emails come through okay. yet. And obviously, the show is in two days. Uh, right. So, so yeah. So we, I don't less than two. The, the fan 30, vote. Yeah, less thir- than we're two. taping at 10:20 Eastern, so it's less than 38 hours. Uh, 38 hours well, away. That's exciting. Crazy, crazy. We're yeah, gonna be but, live that night, by the way. But go ahead. Yeah, your your 2016 was fun because this, this is before I knew Garrett. Obviously, it changes a lot. I, I was I was pulling for Fort Wayne, you know, in every aspect uh, because they were a G League team, and there's very few G League rivals. But uh, you know, being the Canton Charge at the time, we played Fort Wayne like eight thousand. Are they rivals? Year, yeah. Oh yeah, because yeah, so, we're like three hours apart. Yeah, yeah. yeah so th- okay. there's very few rivals in the G League, but I'm like, oh man, and it wasn't even the Charge playing as the Canton Bulldogs and. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of Northeast Ohio guys, but man, I was so pumped up that year. And I, I unfortunately pulled no, not for Garrett to win, uh, but uh, you know, <laughs> a, after that, uh, there's a lot of good, good moments. Uh, you know, Steve Gans, who was a charge coach, yeah, talked about these G League workings, and that's the year where you know they lost the sideline with a couple injuries. But you know, Gansey used to be a charge coach, was a Mad Ants coach. Garrett was able to get him at one time, so the circle is pretty cool. And uh, but it's been awesome watching uh, Fort Wayne champs evolve, and especially like I said, just you got the weirdest, weirdest Pat, story yeah. out of anybody. Um, and, and it's kind of going back to the G League and NBA connection. So it's kind of cool. Like uh, our first year in 2015, Dylan Murphy was our head coach, and he was a really an intern assistant coach for the Mad Ants the last two years. Then he then he got the hired as a full time assistant for the Mad Ants. He last year he he was he is an Orlando Magic assistant coach on the bench now. Like he's worked his way up. And another guy, Tyler Marsh, coaches in 2018. Donnie. Um, he he was a Pacers. Now he's with he was a Pacers assistant on the bench, and now he's uh, with the Vegas the WNBA team. So we've had a lot of great, and we've had Steve Gansey coach us. He was a longtime G League head coach. He just uh, was with College Park the last two years, coached the Mad Ants. I mean, so we've had great. You know, I, I, our co- I love our coaching kind of history of, of these guys, kind of when they were younger, and now what they've and they've been able to do. And I root root for them. So that's awesome. It's funny you mention that too, because like first of all, and we've talked a lot. Uh, and by the way, I didn't know that Canton and uh, Fort Wayne that close because I live in a small town, in New York. I don't know these big metropolitan areas yeah. like Canton and Fort Wayne. But <laughs> what's interesting about the whole thing is like the G League is something that I think people misunderstand. So, Garrett, kind of what do you see as being sort of a big connection between the event we're covering, which is TBT and G League? Like, how has that relationship evolved over the years? Yeah, you know, I, I think originally TBT was kind of looked at not down upon. I'm talking, I'm talking like six, seven, eight, you know, years ago. It was more of like a specialty thing. Where now, I think it's really, you know, besides summer league, it's what people watch in basketball, and it's such a high level. Like you see guys who are playing in the Euro League, playing in the TBT. You're seeing G League high level guys, you know, guys fresh out the NBA, guys that you're going to see in the NBA next year. So it is something that that people can watch. You know, I, you know, I mentioned. Well, when we were off the air, Kiefer Sykes, you know, and I don't think he got that call up just because of his performance in TBT and Bayheim's Army, but I think that definitely helped him get get that, you know, make that decision for them. So, so I think that is where it is. Where now it's really another tool besides summer league because I like TBT. Now, obviously, I'm a TBT guy, but I go to summer league every year um, because of the agency stuff, and I would much rather watch TBT because of the competition level. You're not you're not having players. Hey, you play 20 minutes. You're playing 10 minutes because you're a, a, a first rounder. You're a G League Exhibit 10 guy, so you're going to get 15 minutes. Like that's how summer league works. It's not about really winning necessarily. Like everybody wants to win, obviously. TBT, that's all it's about. I mean, that's run through the wall to win. Otherwise, we're gone. No money, nothing. 
So that's the difference to me. But I think it is just another way to get exposure now. And I always tell guys, you know, like like our clients. So, so I'm with we haven't talked about, it, but I'm a, with a partner in a basketball agency. I always tell guys, TBT is a great experience. It's fun. Don't play it with it with the idea that you're going to get all this exposure. But if you go off, if you make a run, it can help you. It can definitely. I, we've used it for to send the teams for overseas. Like hey, like Kyle Mangus is a good example where he had a really good game against. Uh, he was with the Purdue Menomaki TBT team. Had a really great game against the uh, team for debt, or I forget men, uh, mon- the money team where Jimmer played on last year against Jimmer and against some other guys. But we can show those that film and be like, look, this guy's playing with some really high level guys and and holding his more than holding his own, killing it. So it hel- it definitely helps. And so that's kind of I see the the connection or how things kind of go together. Yeah, and and then from the fan side, just kind of sticking on the same question in uh, the G League is uh, I was a season ticket holder with the uh, charge since 2013, and uh, I didn't even know the TBT existed uh, until uh, 2016, and and that was through you know seeing DJ Stephens try to get on uh, the Bluff City Blues uh, uh, roster, and so it is just he's not he's, playing; he just no, refuses no, to play now, yeah, which makes us both upset. Uh, we we'd love to see him play, but I mean the the TBT as a summer event. To the G League. I mean, these are these are guys we're rooting for. Um, I mean, all year long, and, and I haven't taken the time. I'm I'm pretty nerdy to see what percent of uh, uh, TBT guys have served any time in the G League. Uh, but I mean, it's pretty substantial, you know. So you know, when I talk to charge guys, we, we tease every year. Your chances go up significantly if you have a charge player. <laughs> but you know, we got guys like Matt Mooney, Jacory Williams. Uh, you know, just some some stars in the G League, high high level overseas players now. But uh, you know, just uh, the G League and TBT. If you're a fan of the G League and you're not watching the TBT, you're definitely missing out. It, it, it really is a significant tie, and you know, uh, you know, should 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 be watched by all. And I'll say one 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 more thing, just real quick. You know, with kind of speaking of it, like summer league, like TBT is like a who's who. Like when you go to TBT and you're someone that uh, as a player or someone that you're going to just see so many familiar faces. And it's almost like a re- class reunion every year where I see a guy who played for the Mad Ants 10 years ago. Like, I remember the first TBT. There were, I can't remember his name. I wish I could now. But he's a guy that played with us like five years ago. Canada, like, hey, it's uh, Taj McCullough. That was his name. And it was just like, I love that part of it where you're just seeing guys maybe you'd never see again. And it's just a cool kind of reunion process. Well, I'm kind of bummed you're not actually going to the region that we're going to be at. So you're going to, I believe, Cincinnati. Yeah, so Xavier, like. yep. Xavier's region. But it's funny. I didn't know you were going to Summer League, though. What, we all talk off camera, but I'll have to buy you a beer because I'm going to go out there and pop oh, yeah. a bit. Yeah, so I'll see you there. But uh, talk about the G League, though. Charge and I have this debate all the time. And maybe you can talk about it a bit because we, we come on different sides of this, but we're actually getting closer. Like any, any partnership, the people start to agree more the longer they talk to each other. That's how it works. Uh, the G League is for two things. It's for development of the players and also to give a fan experience to the city they're in. And those are not always competing, but to some degree competing. And, for example, the Fort Wayne Mad Ants will be moving to Indianapolis uh, in the next couple of years, which is which charge being an asshole <laughs> likes. And obviously, you live I lost my team once. So I, I got I to gotta get something close to home now. You have the Pacers. That, you, you can just watch the Pacers. That I would rather. That's, that's going to be the problem I, I, for the. I would Mad rather Ants, watch. Though. I'd yeah. rather watch the G League though. I, in seriousness, I would rather but watch. Matt, uh, but now Fort Wayne doesn't have a team. But that's all right. Noblesville, whatever we call these guys. Yeah. yeah that's it. Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, before Charge is making my point for me, we talked <laughs> a little bit about that. Like, how has the G League's business, where it's been and, and, and development, so it's always been a development league, so it's not the problem. How maybe I, I, for lack of a better word, disappointing is it? that the fans in these cities who love basketball aren't being cultivated the same way when they, for example, have the Fort Wayne Mad Ants or the Canton Charge who have now moved to yeah. Cleveland. Like, what let is me, that doing? What, what, what kind of investment is the NBA making in their fans? Yeah, let me – let me. Well, I'll walk through just a brief history. I'll, I'll use the Mad Ants as an example because that's who I, what I know. But when we started in 2007, pretty much every team in the G – every team in the G League or it was the NBA D League was locally owned had a local ownership except one team, and that was the Los Angeles Lakers. And they had the um, Los Angeles Defenders, and that was their daily team. And the Defenders played at the Lakers arena. It was it was a JV game. And then mm-hmm. there was I remember there was a story. Jordan Farmar played in a, a Defenders game in the G League or D League and then played the Lakers game that night. And it was like a big story, like or not, not big, but for the, D, the D League it was. I'm just going to say G League from going forward just so I don't confuse myself. But so So that's how it started off. But as it went on, 
NBA team started to invest. What originally, what I think, I wish they would have stuck with, there was a hybrid model where there was a local ownership group. They still controlled all the business side, the fan experience, the arena, the season tickets, marketing, sports, sport, uh, sponsors, all that stuff. But the NBA team paid the the local ownership group. I think it was usually it was like three hundred thousand dollars as like a fee, and but then they controlled the basketball and and they controlled the player movements, coaches, all that stuff. And that it's kind of like how minor league baseball works on a most large scale, and that's why it's successful. So the hybrid model was like the main Red Claws and the Celtics. They were a good a good example of that, and there's a lot of other examples. But then we started to get away from that. And we started to go from full ownership of NBA teams. And that's where we kind of got away from, in my eyes, they don't care about the fan, the markets anymore. The fans, they care only about development, which is fine. That's you Basically, you're becoming a line item, an expense of $1.5 million to $2 million. That this is for development of our, of our rookies, our second-year players, um, a way to evaluate talent better, a way to make everything smoother transition so it's the same staffs, or at least the staffs are trained to work the same ways. And that's what it's become and where, you know, even I stayed on for, I don't want to say anything disparaging about any, anybody, but like it just, when, I, when we turned over from the pace, from the local ownership to the Pacers, it became kind of a more corporate like, yeah, we got to ask a million people to get permission to do anything. And it just kind of took a lot of the fun out of it for me personally. And that's why, you know, I was only there for a couple of years, but um, that's kind of what's happened now. Now there are still great market. Texas Legends do a great job with their fan experiences. Sioux Falls is a great, but there are also a lot of teams that just hey, let's move them closer, basically to a suburb of our main city, which is what the Pacers have done. With, and it's Noblesville, which is about thirty minutes from. And you know they're going to say they're going to try to make it a community thing, and maybe maybe it'll work. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but I think in general, I mean, I mean, Charge can talk about you know, what Canton went through and moving it closer. I, I, I haven't really watched too many Cleveland, those games for the, in the G league, but I assume that the attendance is down and, and it's just not the same. It's, it's just more about the basketball, but that's it. There's no, there's 200 people there. Nobody really cares who wins or loses. And that's just, I don't know. It's just not fun. It's, you know, there's a local baseball team here called the four Wayne 10 caps. They have 8,000 people. It's an amazing stadium no one cares about the baseball. They care about the experience. And I think there's a, mi- a middle ground that you have to find, um, which is just kind of missing a lot of times in, in the G league now. Yeah. The, the, the move from uh, Canton <clears throat> to uh, Cleveland was interesting. Um, you know, not, not only, you know, for Canton fans that, uh, you know, were invested for almost 10 years at, at that point in time, Mad Ants obviously invested a lot longer uh, as they look to make the move to Noblesville. But I, I think that's the one thing is that you mentioned is, is the NBA teams. I don't think, uh, you know, the attendance matters to them a whole lot. Um, obviously they would rather fill seats, but the, the first year was a little bit rough. The second year built, but what really gets lost in here is the the community. So I go from a 10 year season ticket holder. You talked about how great it is to go to TBT every summer as a GM seeing former players. I mean, uh, most people, especially the Fort Wayne will not transfer down to Noblesville. That's an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, so it's even worse than what we had to deal with uh, in, in Canton, but uh, you know, you know, hats off to people like Garrett and, you know, I think the Cleveland church staff does a great job of, trying to give the best fan experience but you know it, it really when you're looking for locale it, it's going to take time to build it up it's a new product but uh, i think that's the, the big thing that's still missing after year two in cleveland is there's not as much of that uh, community there that uh, you see the same faces over and over and over for 10 years uh, uh that goes away in a hurry yeah i i don't I, it's something we talked about off camera and i, I I'm, I'm glad because you you're you're a huge charge fan and have been and they moved and i know that didn't make you happy because it made your trip earlier and i know garrett's basically losing a team to our city and there is this balance i've always wondered and it's just one of those things we talked about there were two teams in the NBA final the denver nuggets and the miami heat and they're the two teams whose g league teams are the only two based on one that really need to get a flight one's in michigan for denver one is in south dakota sioux falls sky force a former cba team that is uh in the g league is there a value and i'll ask garrett this is there a value in having your nba minor league players in the G league so hungry to leave this that they're so far away that it kind of grinds into you're not ready yet. You have to earn your spot in the league. Is there a value in that as opposed to just having them train at NBA level facilities and thinking they've already arrived? I, I think there is, you know, I, I, uh, I won't use the players names or anything, but there was a player I remember where the NBA team's like, Hey, we're sending him down here so he can get a taste of what it's like. That it's not going to always sunny. And you know, that if things don't work out, this is where we're going to be. 
and and you need to you know he's kind of being difficult so they signed him down to us so he could get a feel for hey you're on a you're on a bus to iowa for eight hours you're not flying first class with or you're not on a private jet um so there definitely is um you know something to that but i will say you know like speaking of you know the sioux falls is the miami heat team so they they're kind of basically the still what the a hybrid model they're the one in the last two were the local ownership, I believe, still owns a very small percent of the Sioux Falls Sky Force, and then the Heat owns the majority, and the Nuggets and the and the Grand Rapids. The Grand Rapids still has a local ownership team. I know, I know Steve Jabara, um, and he actually went to the same same college as I did, uh, a little bit younger. But so those are and those are two of the more successful teams off the court and on the court, and you know maybe there's something to that. But I, I do think there is something with yeah, it's not just hey. We're not, you're not driving 20 minutes. You're going to fly. Then you're going to get on a bus trip and bus trip and, and maybe puts a little more incentive to get go with the flow when you're with the NBA team. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the locale becomes more uh, important now that we have the two-way players. So, you know, prior to the two-way players, uh, you, you had guys kind of, you know, fighting it out, grinding it out. You had affiliate players, but not two-way players. So this is, uh, you know, bigger names, you know, people who are just about NBA ready. And, and, and I think, uh, you know, from a, a team standpoint, it's so important to have those guys close because, uh, you know, this, this should, nowadays where everyone's kind of managing their games and, you know, that 15-man roster truly does – expand out to 16, 17. So having, having those guys locally is, is, is so important now. Not that you know, we agree with it from a Canton uh, for Wayne standpoint, no. but uh, you know, from a business side, I can't blame them for, you know, what they're trying to do as a, as a team, because yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's a drop in the bucket. These uh, G league budgets compared to the NBA budget. No. Th- and that's a great point. And that's something, you know, I probably don't think about enough is like, especially with the two ways, like you're us- utilizing the G league way more than they did. Like we went as the Mad Ants, our first three seasons, I think we had like a total of like one or two players assigned down to us. We're now almost every night you're seeing on the court potentially you could have four guys, you could have two two way players, you could have two uh, a first rounder and a second rounder down, or second like so you could have four NBA players on the court. So you want it to be closer, and that, and that makes sense, you know, logistically. I just still think there could be a you know happier a happier medium than just treating it like a, a essentially a JV squad. Yeah, yeah, and I tell you what, uh, probably no one more than the Pacers and the Mad Ants share players. Uh, so even though it's an hour forty-five, and, mm-hmm. and and of course they always pick the uh, charge games to do it, but they'll send down their Terry <laughs> Taylors of the world for that yeah. big uh, for that big rivalry game. But uh, yeah, in, in Fort Wayne and Indiana are always moving people around, getting call ups. I mean, so they're 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 working the system really good. And and I don't know if it's been approved, but I, I think they're trying to get a third two way player here at some point. I, yeah, I think, they, I think it has been. Approved. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the new NBA PA. There's gonna be a third, so that even makes it, for the players. It's great. I mean, it's another opportunity. Yeah, it's funny you guys mentioned the G League being a Bell Mall thing. What's the one team that doesn't have their own home team? The, the Trailblazers, I believe. Is that right? They're, they're right. getting one. There's one. They're, they're, they're getting one this year. Yeah. yeah. So the Suns now because uh, the, the Nas yeah. the, the Suns. Suns were sold to either Grand that's Rapids right. or Detroit. That's uh, right. Which, that's can't right. remember which one. I, but, I forgot. Uh, that's such a weird thing. Yeah, I forgot. About that. <laughs> yeah, that's uh this random how that team uh, ended up with the Suns and ended up uh, somewhere in Michigan. But uh, um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty wild how how it's kind of gone. And then you know the G League is getting a lot more. Uh, kind of views from the G League Ignite. So, you know, talking about the G League Ignite and the Scoot Hendersons of the world. So they're out here playing uh, full seasons now. It wasn't like that in the first season, but G League Ignite's playing full seasons against uh, um, the the uh, the rest of the G League. Uh, we've got teams like Overtime Elite uh, who they're, you know, uh, getting guys drafted and, you know, some of those guys uh, will bounce around. So there's just so many things, international teams with the uh, Capitanis and it's, it's yeah. just grown immensely. And it's going to be cool to get back to that uh, one for one relationship at some point here. I understand the Suns for it though, because like the G League's main role, even if we're going for the fact that it is going more toward developing the fan base, how do you trade for Bradley Beal and have four guys making near max salaries, and then you don't have a G League team when you need that to create quality depth? Like, what kind of idiot is in charge of the Phoenix Suns? I'm gonna burn bridges. I've never been a professional sports writer. I can say that, <laughs> like you know. Hey, you guys ready to talk about bracketology a bit about the Fort Wayne team? Yeah, let's dig in yeah. a little bit. Let's we'll see if I can uh, get any more people angry today. <laughs> okay, so we've got a fairly – now, again, the, the official brand show, this show is being taped on Monday the 19th. It will be released Tuesday morning uh, once our edit team gets done. But this shows us our, our guest, the bracket. We talked about the fact that 
Garrett, we think that really Fort Wayne is better than a six seed. We really think that you guys really belong in that four or five game. We think you're probably better than about billions, but we're trying to force a matchup, get some bank. And the Mayweather Bronner thing, it's the can man. That's just too much. That's just too nice to pass up. So we're going to go ahead and give you uh, that that ETSU Fort Wayne game. Now, first of all, if that is what happens, and it's quite possible this happens, how difficult a game would that be? Like, what would be something you would be concerned about in this kind of matchup? Well, you know, in general, when I look at this bracket, I, I've looked at, you know, I usually put blinders on in TBT once I know I'm in a region where I, I don't care about other. So I've really looked at all these rosters on every team in here. And it's a it's a region where I, no one's like, like, you don't want to play. Like, no one's that scary, but also no one's like you want to play them either. Like, so really, I feel like there's a lot of 50-50 games. So, like, I think that would be a really good matchup for us. And I don't mean that in a good way, but, like, you know, it's going to be tough. But we're also going to be tough for that. Like, I I wouldn't – I guess I'd be – I'm fine with it, you know. And, and I think it will just be whoever plays better that day. I think we have a really good team. They have a good team. But really, from top to bottom, I think you could say that in this, in this region, essentially. Like, if you would have told me we're a three seed, if you would have told me we're a seven seed, I'd just been like, yeah, I really don't care about I, – I don't really get hung up on the seeding either. It's just more – it doesn't matter, you know. You're gonna have to play it. If you're, then you're gonna play it. The tough. The second game is gonna be brutal anyhow. So if you, who cares? Like you got to get through them all. So I don't really get hung up on that. Yeah. Now that you got the pods of eight, the the, the two and three seeds are just gonna get slammed the next round anyways. But th- this one's really weird because uh, TMT signed a bunch of players recently, and they're dramatically better than what it looked like uh, a week ago when you got CJ Ellaby, Mike Scott. Uh, playing on on the money team, so I, I just don't even know how you can manufacture them being a four seed anymore. And so I, I don't. I hope TBT changes their mind and put zip them up back at the number one. Let's you know kind of force. Uh, uh, TMT. Did, uh, I was going to ask, how did the Bucketeers do last year? I don't remember. Did they win a couple games or? Because I know they made a run, but that was twenty twenty one. I can't remember what question. they did in twenty twenty two. I think because that might depend it. on because zip them up made it. They went to the. the Eight round of eight because they beat um, sideline cancer. Uh, Florida TNT beat us, and then Florida TNT beat them. So they were, I guess, they were in the Super Sixteen then. Yeah, they, um, they beat they, fully uh, loaded. They beat fully loaded in the first round. They were a two seed last year. Yeah, I'm pulling okay. it up right now. Yeah, yeah so they, yeah. they they went pretty deep. They beat yes, yeah, right because they uh, lost by one point. They lost the West regional Virginia. final. Yeah, so they, they beat yeah, Warren. They won. They, they won two games, and they won. Yeah, they won, won two, two games. Okay, so they so, made the so, Super Sixteen. I could see it being – yeah, it's tough to put the money team not being a, at least a three. I don't know. That's tough. This is a tough region to proceed. I mean, They're all yeah, tough. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they, yeah, they all are. But I can't. I don't really know. Because, yeah, the host team you think has to be probably at least a two. Maybe the money team is a three. Bucketeers are four. We're five. Nasty Natty, six. And then uh, seven is DRC, eight is BA. That's probably what I would do. I mean, just from a purely – looking at the rosters and the history yeah. type of thing. Yeah. So, so do you have to give uh, autism to one? I mean, and, and I think, I, I think you have really, to, I, I think everyone believes yeah. they have to have the I, one. You, I think you have to, as, as a finalist, I don't know how, and, and maybe, and maybe they'll, the ho- they'll pull the host card, but I mean, you can't have the finalists not be the one seed. Yeah, you I can. You can manufacture whatever damn yeah. matchups you want for television. <laughs> I, that's the thing I always yeah. feel. Oh, well, you can't do this. Yes, you can. Who cares? Yeah. Get I mean, I can see, I can see them. The the Xavier nasty natty, the zip them up. I could definitely see. I mean, that as a business person, that makes sense to me. Like, you guarantee a crowd, you guarantee a crowd on night one, night two, and then hope the whoever they whoever wins wins makes it. But I don't know. George yeah. is thinking on West Virginia, where I kept saying no, 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 and then finally convinced me because we have them, the best Virginia one and Heard and Pitt alum playing in round four or five and you you're guaranteed a gate every night because someone well, either someone in West Virginia or Pitt who's an hour away is going to be alive. So you're getting a gate every night. And that's actually and a really I'll, nice way to do it. Yeah. I'll say, I'll say this about zip them up too. When we, cause we played, we beat, we beat nasty natty in our first game last year, zip them up. Definitely. And obviously it's our home arena. It's Xavier had a much bigger fan. Like Cincinnati's fans, I wouldn't say it traveled as well, even though it's in the same city, but it's a different campus. Like it was probably, you know, 60% of what zip them up had. So I don't know. They probably care more. I guess what I'm saying like they might give zip them up like the easier matchup if they can um, to hope that they move on and not care as much about nasty natty. And I'm just going into the crowd. Like I'm an yeah. old sales G league sales guy. Sure. So um, not, I'm not saying anything about people's talent level, but sure. I can see zip them up getting like uh, 
DRC or, or, or about billions and then Nastinati just kind of gets thrown in as like a normal team in this region, essentially. Yeah, I mean, the thing here is there, I don't think there's a single gimme in this region. No, I mean, th- and I'm not this is to, one of the few that there's yeah. not a gimme because about billions, I think, I, I agree with you, they're probably now. the least expected to win would be about billions, but there's there's no gimme in here. There's a couple gimmies in no. the tournament. Um, but uh, yeah, this one here is brutal. But I mean, the way we drew this up, I think in TBT's eyes, if they have to give autism to one, they're, they're going to think this is zip them up's best way to get to the regional final. Yeah. yeah. So Playing let, you in the second round, of course. Let me let me ask the the really difficult question because you know Garrett, we're on good terms, but it, this is partially part of the reason people do. We have dozens of listeners who ask hard questions. Uh, earlier today, it was announced that uh, Prime Time did announce they're not in, which uh, and Charge and I are pretty open about. It. We're independent. TBT gives us no money, so we're huge fans of the event. We're, we love this way to cover it, but we're, we're not afraid to say when we think they've made a bonehead move because that's just no one's paying us so we'll say it and like not having a team like primetime who stepped up who did the bubble for them who showed up as an alternate who's done whatever they've asked in year 10 when you're trying to reward some some history who got you here it's kind of disappointing they're not in the fort wayne champs have a wonderful history they're not an alumni team the mad ants are moving how do you keep your team's days from being numbered in this event? I know that's a really difficult question to ask you, not even a friendly one, but yeah. just how do we play this out? Like what what's next to a four way match? Do you have to keep you have to keep winning, right? Yeah, I think I think that's the biggest thing. And I I love that they reward the teams that win because I, I feel like, yeah, that has to be part of it. And if you win, you're in. And also, you know, like if you if you load up and you get some big name players, you know, if we get Lance Stevens in our team, like we're gonna probably we'd be in without winning, probably, or somebody like that. So I think that'd be – so if we – let's say, God forbid, we lose this year. I mean, I'd probably have to be like, I know going in, I have to just be absolutely loaded. I have to turn into an Eberlein Drive or an Armored Athlete type with those bigger name overseas guys or, or college players that have the big names where – like I love my team this year because we have guys who have just grinded their way up. We have two guys that played NAIA. One guy, Stanley Whitaker. Uh, just an, uh, and it was just announced today he's signing a, a big team in Italy. Went from, you know, three years ago he was playing in Austria. Now he's you know making huge money in Italy. Uh, Sadio Rojas was in AIA, won a championship in the G League with the Mad Ants, played in Spain at you know the highest level of for the last eight or nine years. So like I love that about our team this year and a lot of other players. We have no big school. We have no Dukes on our team. We have no none of those schools at all. Um, but go, if, you know, if we were to have to get in on that merit next year, because if we lose the first game, then I would know that going in, like, Hey, I have to have some of these big, big name guys for sure. That's, that's how I would look at how I'd have to get in. Garrett, tell us about this tryout. Is charge invited? Where do you see charge having a role in the tryout with your team? Do you see charge more as a <laughs> wing? Like how is this tryout going to work for Fort Wayne and how can charge qualify to play on the team? Yeah. Well, he can pay $150. He can definitely try out. That's the first step. <laughs> um, I'll take anybody's money there. But um, so I actually, I love this. So the tryout, I, I wish I'd given myself a little more time to set this up, but I mean, it'll, it's going to be great, but just as far as giving people more notice um, to plan it. But so the Mad Ants used to do, or they, I think they really still did up until recently, but they do an open tryout every year, and it'd usually be like in October, about two months before the season, a month and a half. And we used to guarantee, when we were locally owned, we would guarantee we would take one guy from the open tryout to training camp. Doesn't mean you're going to make the team, but you could put training camp. So I kind of wanted to mirror that. So we're having an open tryout. It's June 29th um, in Fort Wayne. On, it's Thursday, 530 next week where I'm guaranteeing not only are you going to make a training camp, because we're not really having a real training camp, we're going to have some practices, you're going to make the roster. So it's like one guy from that training camp is going to make, or I'm sorry, one guy from that trial is going to make the roster. And what's nice with this year with TBT is what they've done is they've given GMs this, these three extra roster spots where you used to be, you'd get nine, you'd have to pay a 1000 bucks for each extra roster spot. This year they're giving this three. Which three. is criminal, which is criminal. So I'm using one of those extra rosters because I don't want to have 12 guys. I mean, even 12 guys, that's too many to me. Like, you're going to have people that are mad, that aren't playing. So now we're going to have either, you know, 10 or maybe we'll have 11. I'm hoping to just stick with the nine that we have and then we'll add the tryout guy. And hey, that doesn't guarantee you have minutes, but maybe, you know, if you're a guy, if you could, I don't know who's going to come to this tryout. You know, like, you never, like, there's guys that made the Mad Ants rosters and had great careers from that tryout. So I'm not discounting anyone. You'll have a real opportunity to make the team. You'll, you, We'll take one guy. One guy is going to be on the team. Maybe we'll take two. I mean, it just depends on who shows up. 
so I love it, and it's kind of what TBT is all about, you know, giving some guys exposure and and who knows what what can happen. So yeah, Thursday, June June 29th, Look at all our social medias. I mean, if anyone's local and wants to try out, it's 150 bucks. Um, I'm gonna throw some discount codes around too if there's anyone wants to reach out to us directly. Um, I think it's gonna be really fun, and it'll give us a chance to get our staff together, kind of get on the same page too, and 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 look at it. But I, I'm looking forward to it. yeah. Charge definitely should come up and check it out. <laughs> if he's a guy if he's free. Yeah, I noticed how you didn't actually say how you saw Charge positionally. I thought that was a very nice. Uh, oh no, he, he he yeah. On on social media, I said I was gonna go out there and uh, see if I can't <laughs> earn a spot in. Uh, and Garrett uh, so eloquently says, uh, you should come up and evaluate the talent. Yeah, help so, us pick so the no, player. Help no, us pick no, the player, yeah. Nothing <laughs> about actually uh, getting on the court, but, yeah, I don't blame you for that. Uh, you're, you're making the right call. <laughs> I'll, I'll stay in my lane. Hey, hey, Charge did in 2021 gave us a suite to have our, our film session. Um, uh, he was in West Virginia. At the and, suite. At yeah, the nicest hotel the, the where they yeah. have. And, yeah, yeah, the only nice probably hotel. No, I, don't, I shouldn't say that. Um, do, do you know but, where we're going to be yeah. staying in West Virginia? I don't even know. Like, I looked at the hotels. Like, I think they're all pretty – I don't know. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting you. No, no, no. Yeah, I was just that – was, that was really fun. I appreciate that, Charge, too. That was really nice of you to well, let us have your – have the film session. In your, yeah, no, your like I said, uh, once Canton took it to you, then it was uh, – like I said, I, I have so much respect for the Fort Wayne team just because uh, the G League aspect of it. But I, I still think this Fort Wayne Champs team is kind of embodies that, that G League spirit. Uh, you know, some – I mean, Taylor Persons is probably one of the best players in – to TBT that nobody talks about. And, uh, you know, a bunch of guys who, like you said, if, if you had to go out and start recruiting, it'd be a different story, but these are guys that just come and they play together and know their role and, and have something to prove. So, you know, kind of embodies a lot of that G league spirit. And so it's been really cool watching and, you know, being a small part of it, uh, getting to know you and coach Gansey and hanging out in uh, West Virginia is a, a blast, but that's, that's what fans should really love about Fort Wayne is the brand of basketball and what you guys stand for. Yeah. And I, I was going to say, you know, you mentioned Taylor Persons, and it makes me think about one of my kind of philosophies. I always called him the wrong name. I always call him Tyler. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm sure he's heard it all before. But um, <laughs> what, what I what I always think about when I'm making a team, like, you don't – I don't really want guys that – you don't know if you're going to get 75%. Like, the bigger name guys who maybe are, I'm too cool for this, but I'm doing it, especially, like, if they're getting paid by a team. Like, sure, we're showing up. I want guys who are going to run through a wall, who want to win. They don't – that's all they care about. And, and that's why I'd much rather have those guys – and somebody that has, you know, has some time in the NBA or whatever, like too cool for you know. school. Yeah, exactly. That and there is that factor. You see that every year where teams get knocked out. Like, how did they get knocked out on paper? They should have smoked this team, and it's because they didn't know what they were getting into, you know. And then so, and then also, also TBT experience, I think, is big. You know, Taylor's played in several TBTs now. Steph Hicks has played in several. You know, Sadi is a guy like he's a, is a run through the wall guy, like a 50-50 ball. He's getting it. Um, you know, Brandon Gilbeck's on our team. He's played in a couple TBTs. He loves it. But that's what I want. I want guys that love TBT where if I'm begging someone to be on the roster, like, first of all, are they going to show up? Probably not. 50-50 chance. Now you waste the roster spot. And then then B, if they do show up, what are you getting out of them? Effort level. Or, or are they going to be like, why am I not playing 35 minutes? Like, that's what I worry about. So I, I love our team just because it's guys that pay their dues, that have worked their way up and to be in great positions. And I think we have a great team. I think we have a team that, again, is probably going to get slept on a little bit, or you know, unless you do a deep dive. And I'm probably one of the nerds that, you know, I'm on Eurobasket.com probably three hours a day every day. So maybe I'm looking a little deeper than some people. But I think we're I have a great team, and I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm excited. That's who's your sponsor. We should get Eurobasket to sponsor our fucking show. I bet they would give us three dollars to for every listener we have. <laughs> hey, so Garrett, like, we, we, this has been a great conversation. One of our easier shows. You're always very personal. We love this, and thanks for answering some rather pointed, and difficult, and in my case, dickish questions. But let's tell you though, something kind of positive. So you work with the Potter Sports Group. How did you become an agent? And what? Tell us a little bit about the Potter Sports Group. Yeah. So Potter Sports Group. So. So Jeff Potter was the founder of the Foreign Mad Ants. Um, he started the team. He was the president and general manager. And then he's the one who hired me in, back in 2007 as, a, as an account executive salesperson. So when the team got sold, uh, and, and, we, and we did really well with it, it was like the highest, you know, probably ever will be my sell of a minor league parent franchise. You know, I stuck around for a couple of years, but then we decided, hey, we still want to do something in basketball, you know, do something a little differently. So we started this agency. So Jeff is actually the the managing partner and the agent. He has the NBA license, the FIBA license. I am not technically really an agent. I'm just a partner, but I do a lot of the logistics. I still re recruiting the players and then doing all the back end stuff. But 
just I always had a love of staying in touch with the players that played for the Mad Ants and seeing how their careers progress, rooting for them, keeping in touch, you know, and kind of learned a little bit about it, business that way of it. And it's just an extension of that. Like, how can we be a resource for these guys to better their careers? But now we're actually more formally doing it where back then, you know, Jeff was helping guys as a drill manager where, you know, where their agents should have been helping them get call-ups or look, consider overseas options where they couldn't get a hold of their agent or their agent was giving them the wrong advice. And he, and he used to also be a professional basketball player. So he'd seen all that. He's like, there's a better, we can be better than what's out there. So that's kind of what the mindset we went out and did. And just, you've seen all, all of it, you know, if, if you've worked in the G league that long, that of what these guys go through and, and you don't want to be a guy that you, you know, you call your, you call your agent, you can't get a hold of him for three days or, Hey, I'm not getting paid. This guy's afraid of confrontation. He's not, he's on the team side. He's not really helping you. Like we're, we're like, no, you're, we work for you. And that's what we're all about. And we just actually are finishing up really tomorrow. We had all of our rookie guys come to Fort Wayne who are going to be playing professionally, whether it's, you know, NBA G league overseas to work out and train. It's just a fun, I don't know. I just love it. Um, you just see these guys grow their careers. Like we have, a, we had a guy, uh, Jeremy Jones, he, he played at Gonzaga um, on a really good team where, so he wasn't, he's a six, seven, but you know, behind a lot of guys who end up, you know, drafted or NBA rosters started off in Austria, you know, not making a lot of money next year, BBL Germany, which is a really good league. So he, so he had a good jump third year. He's making big money in Japan fourth year. Now he's in a higher level. Of Japan. Now he's making about as much as you make as a two way player in most cases. And just to see, I love to see that for guys and with the poop, put the work in and, and that, and that, yeah, that's what we do, and, and that's why I enjoy it. Wow, that's that sounds like a really great career choice. I'm really, really happy for you. I mean, as a guy who's an architect, dude, you know, his clients drive him nuts. I'm very jealous. That's like your clients are actually nice people, whereas mine well, are all yeah. like, there's, mine there's, are there's, always, <laughs> there's always problems you got to deal with, fires you got to put out, but uh, it is it is a fun, it doesn't feel like a job. And that's what that's the fun part of it, yeah. Yeah, George, anything you want to go with, or should we ask you our final question? Yeah, no, go ahead and ask uh, Garrett to find a question. It's been fun. Yeah, this has been one of our more interesting shows, Garrett. Thanks for coming on. So just real quick, there's a lot of neutrals in TBT. There's a lot of basketball junkies. Why are the neutrals rooting for Fort Wayne? You know, I think from what I, what I talked about a little bit earlier, but just that our team, you know, I, I was – so TBT does – they have their interns or staff call. I think it's for background information for the announcers to kind of, hey, talk about the players, talk about your story. And I hadn't really even put it together, but I started to look at our roster. I was like, okay, Brandon Gilbeck, Western Illinois, Stanley Whitaker went to Kaiser, which is an NAIA, Sadia Rojas, Oklahoma Wesleyan, an NAIA, Taylor Persons, you know, Ball State isn't the, you know, the, it's, a, it's a decent sized school, but it's not like a IU or something or Purdue. Um, and just down the line, literally no big schools, guys that started at lower levels overseas and have now be put themselves in positions to where they're, you know, like I said, Stanley Whitaker from in NAIA to top division Italy, which is like a major league. I mean, that's huge in a, in a fairly short period of time. Um, so, the, so that's why I would say root for us. We are, we are the underdogs, but we're the underdogs who've paid our dues and are now ready to, to be the dog, you know, and to win this thing. And I, I think we got the, the pieces in place and I'm still looking, you know, I've, every team is still probably looking for, you know, maybe one, one piece or two more pieces. And I was talking to, uh, some, I can't remember who I've talked to today about TBT. It's always random like that. But <laughs> I told somebody, um, you know, 10, 10 days in TBT is like 10 years. So, like, I'm not – July 1st is the deadline to end players. I'm not even really worried about it yet. I mean, let's, oh, let's it's an eon away. And yeah, yeah. So, I'm not worried about it. Like, I, I've been sending some feelers out. but And, like, if, if we have our nine we have, I'm, I'm thrilled with that. Um, but it's always, it always doesn't hurt to keep your mind open. And obviously we are going to add the one guy from the open trials for sure, but then you still have two spots I could potentially use. And also you never know, TBT, like everybody looks great on paper, but summer league, injuries, guys forgot about a wedding. Like everyone loses somebody, so you got to keep an eye out for that too. And I've been through that as well. So just, yeah, that's root for us because we're, we're the underdogs that have, but we've put the work and we're ready to go and, and we're ready to take it home this year. That roster spot can go to charge if nothing else. We can get there you go. Yeah, the, yeah. Jersey. Might as well not go unused. One hundred and fifty bucks. I'll send you my Venmo <laughs> right after this. Yeah. You're there. You one hundred and fifty, and I'm going to Cincinnati deal. I'm yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You can there. free ticket at oh, least. There, there you go. go. <laughs> well, you got, we have to pick you. We have to pick you though. But you at least be a, you have a chance. 
you know. Well, we get press passes usually. Unless, gonna, <laughs> unless, unless I've been such a jerk this year, they're just like, nah, charge gets one, but Hainer can go fuck himself. Which is, <laughs> there's a non-zero chance of what happens this year, to be honest with you. Well, anyway, Jared, it's been a real pleasure. Thanks for coming on. We really enjoyed yeah, our time tonight. Stay on after so we can say hi for a few minutes. But right. uh, this has been Charge and Hainer uh, signing off on Zoom to TBT. Hope you enjoyed listening to Zoom the TBT with Charge and Hainer. Subscribe to YouTube, follow on Twitter, and give us your money.